Yeah. Well, welcome everybody. Um, yeah, this is a talk about a desktop topic. I actually wasn't sure if that's a good idea to submit, uh, but I was in encouraged to do so. Yeah, but I'm actually qualified to talk about why CentOS is a great desktop distribution and why Ubuntu might be the better choice, uh, or often is the better choice in the end. Uh, to explain that a little bit, uh, I'm uh, actually known in the Linux world more for stuff I'm doing on, on the Linux kernel. You might have seen LWNNet articles about uh, my work for regression tracking, for, for example. And some of you might know me from my history as a Fedora contributor. I actually did quite a lot of things in Fedora, like about 10 years ago, and uh, still build vanilla kernel packages for Fedora. But the main reason why I feel qualified maybe to talk about this is actually I'm working for mainstream German computer magazine and regularly testing Linux distributions there. It's a CT magazine, uh, those from Germany might know that. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so why am I here? Yeah, I'm basically running centers on my servers, but as I mentioned, I'm, uh, I'm a writer, so I'm having just a server, one at home and uh, one at work. Um, um, but I also um, uh, run centers on machines I administrate for, for less tech-savvy people, like uh, friends and family, for example. I also got uh, helped uh, getting EPL running, also got helped uh, RPM Fusion running, and basically I did that to make CentOS a kind of uh, a Fedora LTS dis dis distribution. It's basically, I, back then I was a Fedora contributor that wanted to make as, as, uh, wanted to feel home uh, when he's uh, used, uh, running a uh, machine with CentOS uh, for desktop purposes. Yeah, um, that actually worked quite well for my first long-term girlfriend's desktop machine. Uh, that was about 15 years ago, I think it was in the CentOS 4 days back then. And um, <coughs> my second long-term and current girlfriend, uh, for her it didn't, work really, it didn't really work out. Um, that was about four years ago, it was in a little bit older laptop, and um, a 32-bit laptop actually, and tried CentOS 6 there, and uh, it didn't work out due to various problems. I actually installed Ubuntu 16.04 instead. Uh, another reason why I ran, recently ran into trouble was, uh, was a co-worker who had uh, trouble installing CentOS on, on her on a new machine. She actually started uh, uh, there and actually installed it on quite a new machine and it didn't work. Yeah, uh, those incidents were one motivation for this talk. The other is actually my work and our magazine. We sometimes write articles, use this Linux or that Linux like that on machines you want to yeah, use for some particular use case. And if this particular use case actually is a home server, we actually sometimes already had art articles where we used CentOS uh, as, as a Linux of choice, uh, and we told our uh, readers to use. And uh, sometimes we also had um, articles uh, where, we, where the desktop was in, in, in the focus. And um, um, uh, so like using Linux for, uh, de for a desktop for less tech-savvy people like friends and family, your, your parents or something like that, uh, on, on the desktop or on the laptop. And there, CentOS was um, some, sometimes or even oft, quite often considered, uh, but always was quickly <coughs> discarded. Um, I didn't like that much, uh, but on the other hand, I could understand the reasons uh, my uh, colleagues mentioned why it might be a, a bad idea. And um, yeah, that's what I'm going to talk about. Um, but to explain why it uh, was a bad idea, uh, you have to know, yeah, a mainstream magazine really wants to make sure um, the readers are happy and buy the, the magazine again, because otherwise uh, I'm out of job. Yeah, just uh, for completeness in the end, we often uh, agreed on Ubuntu. Um, why is that? I'll explain in a bit. <coughs> uh, but on the other hand, um, as I know a lot about CentOS and Fedora, I always thought, hey, CentOS, CentOS with a few tweaks might be really great for this use case. And uh, yeah, that's, that's basically why I'm here. So let's quickly uh, dig into uh, uh, what uh, CentOS, where CentOS is great and where it failed to satisfy for desktops and laptops for home and work use. And first up is actually why it's great. I'll do it a, lot, a little bit quickly because I assume most of you know a lot about uh, CentOS. So I won't go into too much into the details there. And um, yeah, 
the, the main thing why, uh, thing why I think CentOS, CentOS is great for this use case is actually you can install it on your hard, uh, hardware, your system or laptop or something, and actually use it till you throw the hardware away. Uh, and uh, never have to learn anything brand new during the time or adjust config files or anything like that. That's because that's simply possible uh, um, uh, uh, with CentOS due to its lifespan. CentOS is there way better than all the other distros out there. It's uh, no, uh, of no cost and actually gets 10 years of regular support. So even if you install it on the machine right before a new major release comes out, which actually is uh, uh, with the new uh, Red Hat Enterprise release cadence should happen every th three years. So basically, if you install it uh, right before such an event, you still have seven years uh, 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 where you can run uh, this operating system, and uh, that's often enough um, for people, uh, uh, because then most of them throw the hardware away. For Ubuntu, on the other hand, is uh, less ideal there, because it's uh, basically just five years of regular support, and uh, if you install it right before a next uh, long-term support release comes out, you only have basically three years. And um, yeah, that's often not enough because most of us these days actually use their, their hardware longer. Yeah, as I mentioned, some text, uh, less text savvy people actually use their hardware longer, but seven or to 10 years, as I mentioned, often is really enough to, uh, for, for most people. Uh, for reference, uh, Linux Mint is actually similar to Ubuntu in this case, uh, and Debian with LTS2, they also go uh, up to f uh, five years um, uh, most of the time, or three years if you install them right before a new um, um, major release comes out. And most of the other free uh, Linux distributions out there are actually worse. That's one of the areas where uh, CentOS really shines, um, or at least is uh, way better than people think. Uh, there are a few others. Uh, CentOS also has a relatively uh, modern hardware, actually, for an enterprise or LTS distro, because it's actually using a, a little bit relaxed update approach uh, that still avoids uh, disruptive, disruptive, disruptive change. Uh, it actually gets that from, from RHEL, actually, uh, where we actually, every second re uh, minor release, for, us, for example, sometimes get new versions of desktop software, uh, which is something um, uh, a lot of people want. That sounds a little bit like, hey, that's not stable. Um, but be assured, um, versions might change, uh, but big difference uh, will be avoided. Uh, such a switch like it happened in the GNOME days a few years ago, like from uh, 2, 2 dot something to 3.0, uh, would be a no-go for RHEL and basically for CentOS as well. It's a bad point in time to explain that a little bit uh, clearer, but uh, if you look at uh, CentOS or RHEL 7, you actually will notice um, that, that uh, GNOME actually was released. It's actually, actually uh, based, uh, uh, what RHEL 7 is using is from March 2018, uh, so basically four years younger than what was shipped when CentOS uh, and RHEL 7 came out. LibreOffice is also a lot younger, uh, just three years younger, and so uh, it was updated as well. In Ubuntu, on the other hand, uh, so, such software is uh, never uh, rebased, so it will always uh, stay on the version you get uh, when it's released. So uh, and that basically means you don't get any of the bug fixes uh, the GNOME and uh, LibreOffice developers build into their software, but obviously uh, they sometimes uh, when they fix bugs, they also, also introduce new bugs, so it's a bit of back and forth, but often uh, people these days prefer more, more, version, uh, more modern versions uh, because you get used to that from, from Firefox and all the browsers that are doing this. Uh, another area where CentOS is not as bad, bad as it, uh, a lot of people think, um, it uh, supports newly released hardware quite good. Um, because um, CentOS from, uh, uh, with the minor releases from RHEL actually um, gets updated drivers for better hardware support every six months um, uh, in the first five years actually. So even if there's a new major release out, there often are, uh, sometimes are even driver updates to support new hardware. Uh, for Ubuntu on the other hand, it's uh, similar but not that good. You actually get the first ha uh, hardware support update uh, after, six, uh, uh, after nine months and then every six months and only for, for two and, uh, uh, years and a bit. And to explain that a little bit deeper, RHEL 8.1 and SAS, um, 
CentOS 8.1 actually bought graphics drivers from Linux 5.1 which got uh, released in, in November, so that's bit, uh, actually newer than what's currently shipping in Ubuntu 18.04.3, uh, which is the latest 18 uh, LTS release currently, um, because that's still on, on Linux 5.0 totally. But 5 actually, what? 5.3 landed. 5.3 landed, uh, yeah, but uh, that only gets, uh, that's about to change with the next minor release that's coming out in the next few days. When so you look at install media, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's so, so, so soon Ubuntu will be newer again, yeah. But there will be a new uh, minor release from RHEL also again, so that's basically back and forth all the time. Debian, on the other hand, just for com comparison, um, won't get any fresh drivers for new released hardware, um, uh, except a small driver enhancement that make it into the long term kernel, stable trees. Kernel back. New kernel lands in the stable backwards. Five, yeah, yeah. Four is some, backwards. Someone from the audience just mentions there are new kernels from the stable release get to the to the get released as proper update. That's true, and they sometimes have very small enhancements for for, for uh, with drivers. But if you really really need a big new driver, like AMD releases uh, a new graphics card series. Uh, that won't get into Debian stable normally. Most, if, it, if it's a big new generation, that normally happens. You can install the uh, newer kernel from from uh, testing or unstable. Then it's no from Buster backwards. From all, oh yeah, oh, and, oh yeah, and they obviously are backports. But that's uh, in uh, a repository you have to uh, en uh, enable explicitly. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it becomes a little bit of a bigger problem if you don't use uh, backports in Debian. So. No clear winner here when comparing these distributions, but uh, a 4.18 based Linux kernel that CentOS 8 is currently using is not as bad, bad as it sounds, and in some regards might be even better than the uh, uh, kernel that's uh, the 4.19 kernel that Debian actually used. So <clears throat> that was uh, I focused here on graphics drivers because they get uh, updated with rel minor releases. The situation is a bit more complicated uh, because the kernel is a problem, but we get to that. But to sum, uh, sum up, the uh, uh, CentOS really is very interesting due to its lo uh, long <coughs> life lifetime and this minor releases that bring updated software and drivers. <coughs> so where's CentOS actually lagging behind? There were actually three problems on my girl current girlfriend's laptops. Um, she actually had a video car uh, camera in this uh, device that needed a driver that was simply not enabled in the RHEL and CentOS kernel. Uh, there was a Wi-Fi chip in this uh, laptop it actually needed a proprietary driver. Some of you might have heard of it. This is a Broadcom uh, VL driver that uh, uh, a lot of laptops needed like uh, five or six years ago. It's not that common these days anymore. And the third problem actually were dependency problems. When installing some audio and video packages from a third party site, uh, obviously that's uh, not something where, where, where CentOS is at fault. Um, but on the other hand, it's something a lot of users will want because a lot of uh, users want to play audio and video codecs that uh, are unsupportable with free, free, dry, uh, free software or, uh, due to patents or something like that and, and things like that. And so you often need this. I could have worked around on, on, in, and solved all those problems. Uh, I know how to do that. Uh, but at the end, I choose uh, it's not worth the maintenance hassle um, <coughs> because I have to support it then. And uh, I uh, just wanted to uh, give the uh, laptop with an operating system to my girlfriend and she could use it uh, without me interfering all the time. So we, I installed Ubuntu instead and everything worked there. And these problems, I think, are anything but atypical. As it turns out, um, these things are quite similar to the concerns at, uh, we had at work, why, why CentOS might be a bad solution for, for when writing um, uh, articles about uh, Linux desktop or using it on a Linux desktop. Um, the, the angle is a little bit different. There were, it's basically users uh, sometimes want uh, free and open source software uh, drivers for quite old and brand new hardware. Actually, we write a lot about uh, new ha hardware releases tested in our magazine, so the uh, readers will always ask us if it's supported on the Linux distribution you recently used for this and that other article, so that's um, why I'm obviously interested in this. And some users, as much as I don't like it, they really want to um, install proprietary drivers, especially the and those for NVIDIA cards. And uh, yeah, most users, just as I for, for the, my laptop's girlfriend, 
want to install some software, software that CentOS doesn't ship for some reason, and that must work flawlessly. So let's take a little bit close, a look, look a little bit closer at all those problems. So the first problem was the hardware support with free drivers. Now that basically boils down to Red Hat actually disables quite a few kernel drivers that are relevant for modern or, and uh, older desktop users. Quite a few, it's actually uh, hundreds, maybe thousands. I took a closer look at the kernel modules that are shipped in um, Fedora and Red Hat. And if you look a little bit clo closer, um, uh, the above line is uh, look at uh, how many modules uh, the uh, kernel packages uh, for center ship, and it's about 2,509. And this one actually is um, from a kernel from Fedora 31. And uh, it's a little bit newer, obviously, so a few more drivers are in that. Uh, but as you can see, it's basically 1,000 drivers more. 3,500 and some, yeah. Um, and that's easily explained. If you look at the configuration from the uh, CentOS or Red Hat kernel, um, there are quite a few differences. I don't know if you know this, uh, conf uh, the, the, this uh, file view that's uh, metal, that's actually a source view diff. Here at the left and then the right, you all see all those differences. Every blue marker here is a difference, like this one showing in the middle. And there you, for example, can see and on the left side is a CentOS kernel. There are, for example, the drivers for uh, 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 quite popular Intel wireless uh, chips, uh, EPV 2100 and 2200, as well as uh, 3945 and 4000. Uh, 9, uh, 965. Uh, I mention that because I guess most of you, if you had a, a laptop in, in the past few, like four, or four to six years ago, back then these chips were really common and they are not supported these days because uh, Red Hat uh, disabled the driver. I guess uh, Intel told them to do that because they didn't want to support that. And as you can see in, in Fedora it's still enabled. That's not the only um, problem of the kernel, actually. Um, those minor releases that I uh, mentioned earlier actually bring <coughs> um, new drivers for new, newly released hardware. Um, but the thing is, um, it's often too late for people that are really buying quite new hardware, uh, because uh, minor releases only happen uh, like ha one, once half a year, and uh, there's some um, uh, time it needs to get the drivers into the kernel. So it's uh, for, for new drivers, that's often too late. And uh, Red Hat uh, actually focuses obviously on enterprise hardware and or things that are actually uh, on enterprise desktops used. So if you are, um, uh, have a laptop of a popular Intel Wi-Fi chips, then it's likely that uh, CentOS and RHEL will work. If you had, for example, an unpopular Realtek Wi-Fi chip, uh, that depends a lot on luck and, uh, and the model you have, if that's work. And if you are looking for gaming hardware support in RHEL uh, and um, CentOS, it's actually uh, unlikely to be supported. Uh, yeah. with, with a bit of luck, it could work, but it's definitely not in the focus for Red Hat. So uh, these three examples show the RHEL kernel holds CentOS actually back on the desktop. In my, uh, the CentOS actually back on the desktop. Um, thing is, I don't have an easy solution uh, there, which can be realized within the bounds of the CentOS project goal, because CentOS tries to be bug-to-bug -bug, uh, compatibility uh, of all that. So, if there's a bug in, in, in RHEL, uh, CentOS actually um, uh, copies that, even if, if they know about it, just to be sure the CentOS actually f uh, just works exactly like in RHEL. So there's not no easy way how to, how to fix this um, with the stock uh, CentOS kernel. The only possible solution might be a different kernel in an official add-on repository. Um, but it obviously must be easy to find and easy to, to use for those that really need it. How could that look like? Maybe simply use the Fedora kernel. Uh, obviously it will uh, likely need a slightly adjusted uh, .config file for, for CentOS to work there. Or maybe um, offer the latest long-term kernel from, from uh, kernel.org, compiled uh, with uh, config uh, derived from Fedora once a year or something like that. Yeah. Um, but not much else is needed for supporting a way broader range of hardware, like Ubuntu and Fedora do these days, like both, uh, both older hardware and fresher hardware. Maybe an updated Mesa, a stack, and libdim 
uh, would be good for gaming because it's 3D drivers and the video acceleration drivers are in there. Um, but sure, that's nothing you can do in your spare time simply after work in, in five minutes. It will take some time, but it's not that much uh, work either. It doesn't need a team of, of ten, 10 people or something. Um, such a kernel would actually have fixed um, the first problem on, on, on my girlfriend's laptop and also uh, the one at our magazine. And uh, I'm well, well aware uh, uh, there are repositories where you can get these kernels, um, but to, to actually uh, get mentioned in a magazine like, like ours, it has to be more official uh, and e easier to use. And uh, yeah, and uh, that's uh, really not 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 an, something that CentOS uh, uh, project really uh, can can do from from today to tomorrow. That uh, requires a lot of thought how to how to realize that if some, something uh, if if they want to do something about it. There's a second problem. Uh, as I mentioned, there was uh, were drivers and software missing in in RHEL, uh, especially uh, drivers uh, proprietary drivers and. Um, that's actually some, something where um, San Fedora is partly at fault uh, uh, because uh, it's not really that good there either. If you look at the Ubuntu, sorry, that's a German screenshot, that, uh, but I had that lying around. You just get, go to uh, drivers and software, and uh, if you have an NVIDIA card, uh, it will simply tell you here, these are the drivers available. You click, so, uh, uh, click here uh, on a driver, click on apply, uh, wait a minute, uh, reboot, and then it's there. And uh, that's really easy, and that's something we in our magazine, for example, can quite easily explain. And most of the users actually won't need any explanation at all, because it's so easy and quite well known. And uh, to uh, make CentOS more popular on the desktop, it actually needs to get as easy, um, at least as easy as it is in Fedora these days, uh, where it's actually uh, a lot uh, easier than like five years ago already, but still, uh, even in Fedora, it's, it's hard, uh, way harder than in Ubuntu. And actually, what would be even better if, uh, it, would, if it would be even more straightforward than in Ubuntu. And uh, what's important there is that uh, these drivers also get installed uh, properly to make sure Optimus is uh, um, uh, supported. And that's just, uh, what you find on, on laptops these days, where you can uh, have a de dedicated um, NVIDIA chip, which is in parallel to your regular graphics chip, uh, which you can uh, use on demand if you need it. Uh, that really what a lot of our readers have, as it seems, um, as uh, mails from our readers show, so that must be supported as well. Uh, actually, um, many years ago, like 10 years ago, I tried to improve things in this area. Um, back to, as I mentioned, I had uh, getting RPM Fusion started. I actually maintained the, uh, NVIDIA driver packages back then. Um, but one thing why I stopped in the end was actually I got a bit frustrated because uh, working together with the Red Hat engineers back then was not that easy um, because I, we needed some changes um, in Fedora back then as well to make things really flawlessly and uh, getting them to make these changes was really hard. Uh, but that's not the only one, uh, one uh, reason why I uh, stopped doing it. There were other reasons, but yeah, that was one of the, them that uh, drive me a little bit crazy. Yeah, to get things uh, improved on, on uh, in CentOS here in this uh, uh, area is, would mean that uh, Fedora likely um, now would have to do the, uh, the groundwork First, um, it um, might be hard to get Red Hat employees to do that, um, but they at least uh, could work closer with the community as far as I, I, I see to get that running. Um, while talking about this, there's one related thing where Ubuntu was also way ahead and actually makes uh, disabling secure boot restrictions really easy. As you might know, most modern PCs, modern computer systems and laptops uh, actually uh, are using secure boot and um, uh, that's e uh, you have to you have to uh, disable it uh, for certain use cases like for example if you want to run any locally compiled kernel model modules and that's obviously what you need if you're running an NVIDIA driver um, so you have to disable that and we also have to disable that for VMware and sometimes uh, VirtualBox even so it's something uh, quite a few people want and that's uh, in Ubuntu quite easy. They, you actually get asked during the installation 
uh, for a password and the next time you reboot it actually asks you this one time password again and then it's disabled it's uh, re re really good and uh, something similar happen actually happens these days when you install the driver and uh, the secure boot is on on uh, uh, Fedora that's um, way harder uh, there are no explanations and things and uh, that's also something where where Fedora sh would need to provide foundations to make this better and then CentOS actually would get them via a new rel release uh, <coughs> on its own in the last time. Yeah, and that basically would have fixed uh, my second uh, problem, the missing non-free driver on my, my girlfriend is actually a Wi-Fi driver, uh, but uh, for the magazine it really would have because, uh, as I mentioned, there are lots of readers uh, that want to install this NVIDIA proprietary driver. So the third problem, installing additional software must be really easy. That's actually um, why where I had problems on, on uh, my girlfriend's laptops and also the colleagues uh, when they tried CentOS also always run into trouble because most of them want to use some proprietary driver or some non-free soft uh, uh, some free software that's not included in CentOS directly. Uh, for example, Chrome, Stream, uh, VLC for video and things like that. And uh, CentOS actually looks bad when compared to Debian there because yeah, Debian has like 40 to 50,000 packages in their default repositories last, last time I, I think uh, I, I checked. Uh, I think that's uh, binary packages of when you build from source, it's, I think it's about 30,000 or something, 25, round about. 1,000 more or less, doesn't matter because Compared to uh, CentOS, that's really a lot. I think uh, CentOS these days has 2,000. Does anyone know the exact number? I didn't check, but, but way less. That makes it uh, um, really easy to get uh, a, a software. And Debian also doesn't uh, have this, uh, the problem with the patents that uh, uh, the Red Hat world has. Uh, so they can even include free world stuff um, we always have to ship and uh, uh, tell our users to use a, a third-party repository like the VLC video player I mentioned already, the unfree video drivers, um, back in the day it was MP3 support, VirtualBox and all those things in Debian you can easily come, uh, get them because they are all part of the distro and send us, uh, you have to find them somewhere else. Um, Debian also has another thing where they shine. Um, they also have a uh, probably uh, fill de facto uh, standard repository for non-free drivers. Uh, you can get the NVIDIA drivers, uh, Steam, Doom shareware files, and all a lot of other proprietary things there easily. Uh, it's not enabled by default normally, uh, but it's easy to, to um, uh, enable if you want, and so all this stuff is just a click away. Um, and actually Debian uh, supports all of that uh, uh, for, for at least three days and some of it even for five if you're using the LTS support in, in Debian. Ubuntu on the other hand is not as good as Debian but it's quite close, it has not that, as many packages but a good, good deal of it, uh, still way more than, than CentOS has and also has a de, fac, de, fa, uh, de facto add-on repository where you can get all the free world and non-free software um, easily uh, that um, they can't ship or don't want to ship and makes it really easy when compared to uh, CentOS uh, especially codec installation for video and audio codecs um, that happens sometimes basically semi-automatically so you don't um, as a user don't notice much of it at all uh, especially if you during the uh, install click uh, set, set, uh, click on this checkbox then some of it will actually uh, uh, be installed uh, on your laptop without you noticing much. Um, for CentOS, it's uh, a small reminder, only packages in the main repository get five years support. Uh, that's roundabout as package set. That's not that much different from a uh, RHEL and CentOS set package set. And uh, what a lot of Ubuntu users don't know is packages in universe and multiverse uh, uh, where the, most of the stuff I mentioned comes from is actually co community supported. Some, some users in those uh, packages in that community actually do a great job, but some packages they are simply imported from Debian and then basically never touched again. So there are security risks there as well. Keep that in mind if you use Ubuntu for that stuff. But still, <coughs> the point holds, CentOS is way behind there in several aspects. 
Apple uh, actually helps quite a bit. Uh, there are quite a lot of uh, packages there, it's, um, but it's not able by, by default, as it is, for example, in uh, this app, uh, uh, which would be good to make uh, people simply <coughs> and, uh, make it easier to get people the software. And um, yeah, but it's not that many packages. And uh, in, in the end, on every system I used CentOS so far, there was at least always one package that was included in Fedora that I couldn't easily come by, come by uh, because it was missing in Apple. That's not really bad, but it's something where things could be actually better. And, uh, but where things actually get worse is uh, for things that Fedora, CentOS and Rel actually can't or doesn't want to include. That's the uh, free world software like the video player, video land client. Uh, the unfree video drivers, VirtualBox, or the non-free software like the, the NVIDIA drivers, Chrome, and all those some things. Uh, the flat pack uh, thing, soft stuff that's coming up there actually helps a lot with flat pack, uh, flat up because it makes it a lot easier to to install this software. That does, but it doesn't solve the problem completely. Um, as there are still some software you will want to install on the host, that's for example the NVIDIA drivers or video codecs, that's something you normally want to install on the host. And um, if you do that, you actually, uh, like most of us do, look for uh, a spare par party repository where you can get those pre-compiled. Yeah, that uh, sounds so easy, but because if you do actually Google, and uh, you get like uh, uh, how tos that described here are the uh, eight best third party repositories for, for centers. Uh, I, I named a few um, that, that I found or that are mentioned most of the time. And as most of you know, if you enable all of those um, in parallel, what, uh, that's what some people actually do, uh, then interesting things sooner or later will happen that a uh, package from one repository will replace from the other or there will be dependency issues and things like that. We've all seen that. Yeah, so that's something uh, where um, the centers um, could help, especially by cleaning up this page that actually explains which um, 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 uh, repositories are out there, or actually blesses one of those repositories. Uh, and uh, yeah, the NVIDIA drive again, when you start actually Googling for NVIDIA and centers, there are lots of how-tos to actually explain manual installation. Um, using packages would actually be a lot, be a lot better, and uh, yeah, uh, small uh, hint there in the uh, uh, or some blessing in, in the wiki what to do actually would be also quite good. Yeah, those were the three biggest problems, in my opinion. Um, obviously, there are more, and um, uh, but those were really the three biggest. Also, now what the, they came also every time up in our magazine. Obviously, there are more. Uh, I mentioned, shortly mentioned in the beginning, the, my co-worker's problem to try to install CentOS on a desktop machine. It actually was a bug in Anaconda uh, for some reason, I don't know exactly why. In the end, we simply installed a, a Fedora inst uh, instead and it actually worked fine. Uh, I've, I've seen similar bugs in Anaconda a few times in, in, in over the past two, 10 or 15 years uh, happening. Uh, that's normal, it happens, but for normal distributions you sometimes uh, go, simply go out there and file a bug somewhere. For CentOS, CentOS that's not that easy, yeah, because uh, it's basically Red Hat who needs to fix that. Maybe CentOS Stream and all those stuff will help. Uh, it remains to be seen uh, how, how this works out. Uh, but it um, might be a little bit hard to, to get fixes in there if that's something where Red Hat developers are not interested in, but uh, yeah. That's something that uh, the future holds, and we can't uh, see see what that brings. Another problem for non-tech savvy people: updates need to be really reliable. Rel and CentOS is quite good there, but as you know, traditional package uh, update managers have their problems. If there's a, if you're running DNF update and there's a power outage, uh, then the RPM database can be quite mixed up. Uh, that's something uh, that will be a big problem for quite a few users. Uh, CentOS Silver Blue um, might be a bit, bit uh, a big step forward here. If you don't know what Silver Blue is, it's a Fedora Silver Blue is actually a distribution that works like uh, more like an, with an image-like approach, uh, where uh, updates are atomic. So you ask either uh, the update is installed at all or not, uh, or, or not. Yeah, uh, but I guess sooner or later we will see that down the road anyway. 
Yeah, those were the three big problems and uh, two smaller uh, problems uh, I wanted to mention. Let's, uh, let's get to the end. Before I go uh, uh, to the end, um, let me mention, uh, just provide feedback, talk to me. No, uh, negative uh, feedback <coughs> is welcome. Just uh, grab me here in the hall. I, I'll stay, stay around for the next two or three hours and I'll be on Fostum uh, as well. You can fo follow me on, on Twitter. I actually, this is basically the uh, account I have that's dedicated to my Fedora and uh, Red Hat world uh, things. Uh, it's also available on Friendicam, which you can use from Mastodon on the Diaspora too. Uh, but there's just one account from, from five, uh, from six I have. Uh, and, and in the end, there will be a URL where you can find those if you're interested. So, takeaways. Centers offers a lot for people uh, that look for an uh, LTS desktop distro. A lot is great, but there are some things that often disqualify it for non tech savvy users. Uh, so for us, CentOS, using, uh, CentOS might be great on the desktop, but for friends and family it might be not the best, because yeah, hardware must be supported, and uh, a lot of users really want unfree codecs and NVIDIA. Things, uh, if things were better there, then CentOS would be, would be a better fit for the desktop, and that's why Ubuntu, in the end, often uh, is way more attractive. Some groundwork to improve things actually would have to be done in Fedora, and uh, we in CentOS would need to find a solution for the Red Hat kernel, sometimes is a bad fit problem. Um, that's, uh, that will be hard too, especially maintaining a different kernel or something, uh, uh, because that's quite a lot of work. And um, yeah, that also would be uh, work required to get um, make people better and actually get one proper third party repo uh, in place, one everybody agrees on that uh, provides uh, users with the free world and non-free stuff most users typically need. Huge amount of work um, and not much leverage to make uh, money out of it. That's uh, a problem, as many of you likely know. Still, I think it's worth the effort because, um, yeah, CentOS could be a really attractive LTS distro, and actually, REL might benefit from it because there are more testers, that, more bugs that are found, and uh, REL um, desktop users would benefit from it also. And uh, Fedora would be better, get better than also. Yeah, actually, um, then we might have the, the best and most versatile distro universe on the market because we would have Fedora Rawhide, which is about development and integration. The latest Fedora release or the second latest Fedora release was, would be for all those who want quite really or moderately fresh distribution. And uh, yeah, there would be relevant centers for the typical enterprise and server usage. And if we do improvements for the desktop, then it could be good for the desktop as well. That's it. If some of you are laughing about the, uh, uh, the slides, it's actually slide 152. I hope it was Huh? Small. Small for this? It was just small amount. Yeah, yeah. I've done uh, talks with 250 slides already. But I have only like uh, 45 minutes for this talk. Yeah. Are there any questions? Yeah, did you try B43 instead of um, the proprietary driver? If, if I tried what? Did you try B43 open source for the Broadcom chipset? Um, for that particular Broadcom chip, I think the, that uh, B43 driver didn't work. That was, there were a few uh, chips out there that really required the uh, uh, proprietary driver, and that was one of them. Okay, that must have been quite some time ago, right? Yeah, it was uh, quite a bit ago, yeah. Um, the B43 had some problems in the 3 series of the kernel, but 4 that has quite improved. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, yeah for, for the record. Um, the, the, uh, from the audience, I was questioned why I didn't use E43. That's an open source driver for most of the, the Broadcom drivers out there. It wasn't possible. And uh, I think B, the driver actually wasn't in, uh, actually enabled in the um, uh, uh, CentOS uh, release I actually used. Yeah, that was CentOS 6, which got released how many years ago? Back then, B43 wasn't around. Obviously, I could uh, inst have installed it somewhere else and, or with a K-mod or something. Yeah, but uh, that's, you have to maintain that, and that's uh, something uh, I didn't look forward to, and that's why I choose I Super. This was, was, was RPM Fusion, or this was uh, something that RPM Fusion was mm. to some extent, no? 
broad, RPM Fusion shipped um, the, the Broadcom VL driver. I don't know if it shipped it for um, CentOS 6. And uh, if, if they shipped the both B43 drivers, I don't know, but um, there was an external repository where, where you sometimes get drivers, uh, 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 module packages with drivers that are not enabled in Fedora, but that's hard. But as I mentioned in the talk, if there would be an external kernel with a uh, newer kernel, that would solve this problem easily. Um, about the NVIDIA issues, if I uh, uh, considered using Nouveau, um, for a lot of systems, Nouveau works okay-ish. But especially on the latest generation hardware, uh, it's, uh, it's rubbish. Uh, what? It's rubbish. It's rubbish. Yeah, somebody from, from the uh, <coughs> audience said rubbish. Yeah, maybe rubbish is the best word. Uh, you can't get much performance out of it. Um, it might be enough for, for the desktop, uh, but consider like the latest generation and a GeForce card that came out like one or one and a half year ago. Uh, that's even with the latest kernel, it's still not supported 3D, that's only coming now. So that will take even until that is, uh, gets into CentOS uh, or something that's still okay. one or two years I, ago. Yeah. Jim? I, I have a question, it's a comment, and this comment will be in three parts. Will you uh, come here and take the mic? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, the, the short version is one of the critiques that you had was about the kernel version, and we actually do have a, a much newer kernel version that is basically the Fedora kernel rebuilt. Uh, that, that's a rough approximation, Fabian can correct me later. Um, but what I'm hearing in that is we have not done a good enough job of making that known because yeah. you were not yeah. aware. So yeah. that, that is in the repository. Right? Yeah, yeah. That, uh, yeah I, I, I know about it, yeah, but it's not easy to find. Uh, Jim mentioned that there is a, a, a basically a, a kernel package out there in the repository, but it's not in the default repositories. So I think it's an add-on. Well, we, we have another volume which is called just a kernel plus. Kernel, which kernel is, plus. Which is exactly the same as the one you have in distro, except that the config uh, has plenty of modules enabled. So yeah. your main critic was the versions Fedora and CentOS, and because CentOS inherits the config part from well. We have plenty of, of Apple disabled. That's true for Kona, but we have Kona Plus, which has, which has everything turned back on again. Yeah, so, okay, yeah. So there is a Kona package, but, but it would be good if it would be more present and easily, easy, more easy to find. Yeah. yeah. What was it, uh, Jim, I thought you wanted to uh, add, uh, add two more points. Oh, oh uh, mostly you said, I was just being a jerk. That was it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. We are talking about uh, using, uh, uh, generally speaking, about using these distributions for for, I mean, for the whole people, I mean, for the whole world. Yeah. So, but there is a difference also because CentOS is community enterprise OS, like uh, Red Hat is Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and you have on the website also a list of hardware that it's compatible with those OS, like also Ubuntu has in the yeah. their page. So, I think there's a big difference. Uh, for us as workers, or for using uh, a laptop at work, and uh, for, for using a laptop at home. For, for yeah. yeah, that was basically, uh, as I mentioned, from, from home, home user, uh, how to <coughs> use CentOS uh, desktop for home users, and less tech savvy people, because we are all uh, know a lot about tech. For us, uh, many of the things are not, not, not much of a problem. Yeah, any more questions? Also getting close to 3 o'clock. I think that's when the next break is. Yeah, so thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>